What's up, y'all? I'm Marcus. Welcome to the lore question and answer series. Uh, I posted up that video letting you guys submit questions, and there were over 1,200 comments in 24 hours. So, let's just get started. Uh, I do want to warn you, a lot of the questions that you guys asked were things that uh, I don't know because they're unknowable. Like, uh, you guys asked a lot of interesting questions, but the reason why they're interesting is because there's not a lot of evidence one way or the other. So a lot of this video is going to include my speculation. So I'm just getting that out there right now. There is going to be a ton of speculation in this video. If you're not interested in speculation, you can just tune out now and I, I apologize. Uh, the, the other things I wanted to note, uh, I'm making this video because there are so many questions and I want to try to answer as many as I can as quickly as I can. I am doing this completely off the cuff. I've got some, I've got a few notes scribbled down, but uh, I am very likely to misremember some things. So if I make some mistakes, you guys can help me out in the comments, correct me on uh, things that I just misremember. Because this is a huge freaking game. There's so much stuff. It's just easy to screw up. Uh, one more thing I wanted to say, I don't have any really relevant game footage, so you got some B-roll running here by request. Uh, this is just a casual playthrough, uh, me just playing the game for myself. I didn't actually intend to upload this, I was, I don't even know why I was recording it, but, um, you might see some cool little tricks if you are able to pay attention, I don't know. Uh, but yeah. So first off, the first question was about the pendant. Let's just get it kicked off right. Uh, so I'm going to have a special guest, Miss Juliet, come and deliver a quote from Mr. Miyazaki. Juliet, take it away. On September 7th, 2011, those words were published in Famitsu, a popular Japanese gaming magazine. It was Mr. Miyazaki's answer to a question about his recommended starting gift. And just like that, the phenomenon was born. Boom, baby. Uh, his words were that from a role play perspective, uh, he, he recommended either no gift or the pendant. And the reason why is because he likes those choices. And then he laughed. And he's been laughing ever since, I'm sure. So. All he said was, from a role play, role play perspective based on his personal preference, he would either take nothing or the pendant. That's how it all got started. That is the quote that got all of this started. It has no known effect in the game. Anyone who tells you otherwise without supplying video evidence should not be believed. I'm sorry, it's come to that. It's really come to that. It's like people saying that you can spare Sif, things like that. If you if they don't show you a video, don't believe them. I'm sorry. Uh, the item can be acquired as a starting gift. Uh, it can be looted as a reward if you are a member of the Forest Hunters and you score a kill. Sometimes you can get a pendant. Uh, or from Rhea's corpse. So, it may have an Ulusil connection due to your ability to find it in the forest. Uh, it could have a Thorland connection via Rhea, no one knows. In terms of lore, it may be the biggest red her herring in the game. It may be the biggest red herring in history, in the history of games, actually. Uh, I don't know. Uh, to me, to me, from a broad perspective, it actually is the most important item in the game. Now, bear with me on this. The, the flavor text, both in English and, and in the Japanese version, is pretty much the same. The difficult journey uh, needs memories. A difficult journey should have some memories. And you will always remember that pendant. And you will always feel like there is something more to the game. The pendant is the sense of ambiguity and mystery that attracts you to this game's lore in the first place. You hate not knowing what the pendant does, but you love to dream. That is the pendant. That's what the pendant is to me. That's what the pendant is to me. Uh, or fuck, man. I don't know. It, it might have a role in the DLC for all I know, dude. I, I don't know. Uh, EMB's official answer on the pendant. Don't know. Don't, don't even care anymore. <laughs> Next question. Uh... Is Solaire gay? 
Maybe. Or maybe you are the gay one. Uh, one of Solaire's dialogues uh, has led a lot of players to question Solaire's sexuality, which I find funny because actually he was questioning your sexuality. <laughs> Uh, at one point, Solaire insinuates that the player may be attracted to him. And if you are playing as a chick, that's pretty straightforward. But if you are playing as a dude, the line is just funny as hell. And I'm not talking ha-ha. Uh, he could be straight. He could be gay. I don't know. And I don't care. I think it was just a funny joke by FromSoft. They had this line of dialogue. And they had it in there. And if you're a female character, it, it makes sense. But if you're a male character, it's just really funny. But, uh, yeah... For everyone questioning Solaire's sexuality, actually, he's also questioning your sexuality. I mean, hell, you're the one that's chatting him up in the first place. He wasn't talking to you. He was sitting there minding his business by the campfire, and you come up trying to make some small talk. I'm just saying. Don't drop your soapstone. On the subject of Solaire, though, um, if the firstborn son of Gwyn is in the game, it's Solaire. Now that's speculation, of course, this is my opinion, blah 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 blah, you guys know that by now, that this video is pretty much all speculation. But, uh, if the firstborn son of Gwen is in the game, I think it's Solaire. There's tons of evidence why Solaire could be the son. I often waver back and forth as to whether he is the son, or the son simply isn't in the game. Currently, I believe Solaire is just a lunatic, and that the firstborn son of Lord Gwen is not in the game. So let, let me go through a little bit and talk about why I think some of the other major contenders are not the firstborn son of Lord Gwyn. Uh, hold on, let me, let me check my notes. I don't want to screw this up. Piss a lot of people off. Uh, I don't think Ornstein is the son of Gwyn. That's my opinion, but it's backed up by a lot of things. Not the least of which being that the firstborn left An Orlando. He was stripped of his deific status and basically kicked out of An Orlando and Ornstein is still in An Orlando uh, that's 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 kind of a crucial point but the biggest piece of evidence that people give for him being the Sun is that the broken spear at the sunlight altar looks like his spear but the rest of the statue looks like it's wearing Gwen's armor so O only the, the spear part looks similar to the Dragon Slayer spear, but if you look at the rest of the statue, it doesn't really look anything like Ornstein. And to me, I think it's very likely this is just a reused art asset. It happens, guys. It happens, guys. At some point, it, it's really difficult with a game like Dark Souls 2 because they obviously put so much love and time and effort, and, and it's so well designed, and there's so much detail that uh, every little thing seems to have significance so if <clears throat> for the small things that don't have any significance it's easy to get confused right I hope that makes sense because there's so much detail for the little things that don't actually matter it's really easy to confuse people that's just my my idea now I could be wrong it could Ornstein could be the son but whatever uh, I don't know if you're still unsure about this uh, I'll give you this 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 little piece right here. This was this is the nail in the coffin for me. In the Ornstein and Smoke boss room, there is a statue of Gwen, a statue of Guinevere, and there's also a missing statue. Now, the general consensus uh, among most players I, 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 is that the missing statue was the firstborn, uh, but it was removed due to his fall from grace. Now, I haven't actually heard anybody arguing against that theory I mean you could you could say oh it could be Gwen's wife or what I, I mean we don't know who it was obviously but and the general consensus is that the missing statue was the firstborn but there are still statues of Ornstein in an Orlando so if Ornstein was the son probably all of the statues would have been removed now, for people who are going to turn around and say, well, well, maybe they were, and then he came back and he put the statues back. But if he returned to An Orlando and put some of them back, he'd probably put all of them back, especially the one in the main room. Uh, I don't know. I, it ain't Ornstein. I, I just don't think it's Ornstein. 
Uh, and going back to Solaire, a lot of people talk about how his miracle, his his lightning spear is evidence for him being the firstborn. Because uh, a lot of people have told me he uses the same miracle as Gwen, but that's not true. Uh, Gwen uses the sunlight spear. Solaire uses lightning spear. It's different. It's a different miracle. Some people say that Ornstein could be the firstborn son because he chucks lightning too. Man, even the Titanite demons chuck lightning. So do the gargoyles. There's there's lots of different lightning elemental enemies. So I just that particular point we can't really use as evidence for one or the other because there's just too many lightning attacks in the game. Uh, really, the only other likely candidate to me is Andre. And actually, Andre is a really good candidate. Uh, it was stated in a developer interview, and this was in the Japanese Only Design Works art book. Uh, this is some information that actually I put out a while back, and I haven't seen any full translations of uh, that interview yet, much to my surprise. I thought someone would jump on that and translate it, but um, apparently all of the information in English on the net about it right now came from me. I don't know. If you guys know of a translated version of that, please let me know because I would be interested to read it because I've only been able to uh, kind of skim through it for important things. And once again, my Japanese is not perfect, so it, there's possibilities that I make mistakes, but uh, it was stated in the developer interview that Andre was originally intended to be a relative of Gwen. And he was also going to have a more important role in the plot. He was actually going to move a statue out of the way to allow the player to pass, probably to the killing of the first flame. Uh, and there's actually a piece of art in the art book that shows that. Additionally, uh, he has a dialogue about how weapons will never betray you, which is really really fucking interesting given the fact that the firstborn son had a love of weapons he he respected arms above all else and quite possibly the firstborn felt betrayed when he was stripped of his deific status so if you look at that dialogue from andre it's really easy to look at that and be like wow that's that's it that's it this is the guy you know i mean it, it really does fit pretty well uh, another thing that really gets me, uh, people always talk about how Solaire's armor, his armor really, uh, really emphasizes that it's just normal. It's just plain stuff. It doesn't have any special power. And a lot of people say, well, that, that that's proof that he's the firstborn son because he's so strong even though he has normal armor. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. It can go either way. But uh, Andre, Andre tells you he is a mere country smith. Which is suspicious enough in itself that he's like, oh, don't mind me, I'm just a little old country smith. But it's doubly, doubly suspicious seeing as he has the crest of Artorius. So, uh, yeah. There's actually some, some really, really big things that can lead people to believe that Andre could be the firstborn son of Lord Gwyn. So why do I not think he's the son? Uh, because the developers said they gave up on giving him an important important role in the story as a descendant of Gwen in the same interview where they mentioned it was his original design. So, yeah, bas basically they said that they backed off on that. They changed that. They didn't go with that design for Andre. So he has a less important role in the story and is... Uh, I cannot remember right now if they specifically said he's not a descendant of Gwen, but I believe they did. Uh, somebody else check out the interview and double check me, fact check me here, guys. It's the Design Works art book uh, interview in the last section. Uh, my current opinion on all of this is that Andre was intended to be the firstborn, but when that was changed, they gave Solaire a number of dialogues in order to just fuck with us. I could be wrong, I could be completely wrong, and I'll probably change my mind again by the time this video goes live. So yeah, that, that's, that's kind of my take. My take is that the Firstborn Son was originally going to be included in the game. I think he was actually going to be Andre, maybe. But they changed the design, uh, and so in order to cover it, and to just kind of... FromSoft, they, they kind of have a funny sense of humor, if you guys haven't caught this uh, by now. They, they they really do some funny shit. 
I kind of halfway think Solar is a joke. But he could be the sun for all I know. Once again, it's just all just spitballing here, people. It, it's one of those really interesting questions that's interesting because there's no answer. And no, there is no reliable evidence that supports Artorius as the firstborn. I just, I haven't seen any anything to make me think that Artorius would be the firstborn. Uh, if you think Solaire, Andre, Artorius, Ornstein, or your mama is the son's firstborn, that's cool, dog. I am not telling you you're wrong. I'm just saying that ain't quite how I see it. So, yeah. There you go. Son's firstborn. I don't think he's in the game. If he is in the game, he's probably Solaire. If it wasn't Solaire, farther down on the list, and only farther down on the list that, because of uh, that interview, would be Andre. It's not Ornstein. I don't think it's Ornstein. Uh, but on the subject of Ornstein and Smo, um, a lot of people wonder about their relationship. Like, are they friends? Are they just comrades? Uh, I, I just uh, people are, are really curious about like what sort of relationship exists between Ornstein and Smo. And probably the reason for that is because if you defeat Smo first, Ornstein just calmly gently places his hand on Smo and it kind of shows this a lot of respect for his fallen ally and just absorbs his power that way whereas Smo just fucking smashes Ornstein with his hammer and you actually see Ornstein's hand twitch a little bit right as the hammer hits uh, so so a lot of people are just kind of interested in this dynamic like Ornstein seems to respect Smo but Smo just doesn't give a shit what what's going on here so first let's talk about what we know about them. Ornstein from his armor, we know that he uh, he's guarding the cathedral in, in Orlando. We know he's a dragon slayer, of course. It's in his name, man. It's in his name, EMB. You ain't gotta tell us that. I'm sorry. Uh, but he's believed to be the captain of the four knights. And I think that's really interesting for a lot of reasons. In the first place, it establishes this idea that there is rank among the knights. Even among the elite knighthood of Lord Gwyn, there is still some sort of rank amongst the four. And he's the captain, but it doesn't say he is the captain. It says he's believed to be the captain. So, at the same time that they introduce this concept of there is rank among these knights, it also introduces some doubt as to what the actual pecking order was. So that's just really cool stuff right there. Uh, really nice little detail. Uh, let me check some other notes here. Oh, his soul. His soul has uh, some interesting, uh, interesting little tidbit on it. Uh, Lord Gwyn granted this soul to his most trusted knights. To his four most trusted knights. So uh, this. Ornstein's soul he received from Lord Gwyn and we already knew that Lord Gwyn split his own soul up and divided its power amongst his followers We know Seath has a shard. We know the four kings have a shard of his soul and uh, Apparently Ornstein received his soul from Lord Gwyn as apparently did the other three of the knights too. So that's really interesting stuff other things we learned from his uh, equipment, from Ornstein's equipment, from his spear. It's effective against dragons, lightning, blah blah blah. It can bury deep within a dragon's hide, but it also sends human flow, human foes flying. So he did fight against humans, and and this is another thing uh, people always ask me about: what race are Ornstein? How big is Artorius? Things like that. I, I don't don't put too much stock into the size of an enemy, the size of a character in the game. Uh, and the reason why, I mean, even if you look at Ornstein, he starts out one size, but if you kill Smo first, he absorbs Smo's soul and he grows much larger. And I just think it's not that sort of thing where this character is this size. Uh, it kind of it kind of comes back to that. The game has a lot of detail in it, so when there's something that doesn't match the details, like that, there's so much stuff that fits with the lore that when there's something that doesn't fit with the lore, it is easy to think that it does. Uh, and this is just kind of a, a game design thing right here. 
In a lot of games, you'll notice this. Uh, MMOs, it's especially prevalent. If you have a human enemy, but then you fight him as a boss, oftentimes he will be represented as being much larger than you, much larger than human. It's to make it look intimidating. It's so that you can see it, so it's more visible, so that you can read the moves better. Uh, things like that and going back to the MMO example, of course, just so you know 40 people in a raid can actually see the boss and, and I know that's a separate separate issue But I'm just saying it's kind of a common trend in game design that even if the enemy is the same as you like human just like you They'll be bigger They're bigger and better and it's just kind of one of those things and you can see this too with the um, with the baller knights or the Knights of Bernice, Berenice, that is, for the English version. Uh, when you fight their undead versions, they're really large, but when you kill the illusion of Guinevere and you encounter uh, an, a knight dressed in Baldur armor and a knight dressed in Berenice armor in uh, An Orlando, they're normal size. They're just human character models with the armor on. So, you can look at it, if you wanted to try to explain it from a lore perspective, you could say that, well, the power of the souls actually increases their size. Or you could just look at it as a game design thing. So, uh, Ornstein may have originally been a mortal. Uh, a mortal, not immortal. A mortal. I think Artorius was mortal. Actually, I'm sure of it because Ingward says uh, in one of his dialogues, he tells you that the abyss is not meant for mortals, but one has tra traversed the abyss, Artorius has. So he, and at the same time that he's telling you to seek out Artorius, which kind of insinuates that Artorius is still alive, which now I don't think he is, but uh, because I think we're going to kill him in the past. But uh, at the same time he's insinuating that Artorius may be alive, he's also kind of suggesting that Artorius was mortal. He was maybe human. And in fact, it's pretty likely he's human because I think he joined the Dark Wraiths. And in order to be a Dark Wraith and go around hunting up some humanity, kind of helps to be human. I don't know if you have to be, but I'm thinking that may be a requirement. So... Artorius may have been human. I don't think Go is human due to the uh, the Ferris information that we have. And I'll talk more about Go in a little bit. But uh, yeah, going back to Ornstein and Smo, I talked a lot about Ornstein. Let's talk a little bit about Smo. Uh, Smo, his armor has extremely high defense and can be worn by humans, but not without great difficulty. Now that kind of insinuates right there that Smo may not be human and in fact I think Smo is not I think he may actually be a giant similar to the giant guards similar to the giant blacksmith similar to the giants in Sin's Fortress once again the size may not be exact but uh, yeah I kinda I'm thinking Smo is actually a giant uh, don't have any proof just my my speculation but a lot of people have said that Smo is crying in the battle after, uh, before or after Ornstein uh, is killed, that they hear him crying. He's actually laughing. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, like a lot of people are saying, I can't tell if he's laughing or crying, can't tell if he's laughing or crying. If you read the description of Smo's soul, he says he's eerily gleeful. It says he's eerily gleeful. Gleeful, of course, meaning happy. And eerily meaning spookily, scarily. So it's kind of weird and he's happy. He's laughing. He's laughing. He's not crying about Ornstein's death. He doesn't give a shit. Because if you read his hammer description, he's an executioner who loved his work. He ground his the bones of his victim into his own feed. And that's why he couldn't become a knight. So <laughs> the relationship between Ornstein and Samo. I think Ornstein respected strength. I think he, of course, had some respect for Smo. I think he was really concerned about honor in, in a weird sort of way, Ornstein was, which may be the reason why he has stayed 
to guard in Orlando. Uh, and the reason I think he was concerned about it is because of him being the, the supposed captain of the Knights. Uh, it's, maybe it shows a little bit of concern about rank uh, or position. Maybe some fealty to his departed liege. I'm not sure. Smo, on the other hand, is just a psychopath that likes to kill. Likes to eat his victims. Doesn't give a shit about Ornstein or anybody else. Probably the only reason he hasn't killed Ornstein to this point is Ornstein is pretty tough. Yeah, so that was a really long and winding road right there, but, uh, yeah, that's Ornstein and Smo. We are approaching the 30 minute mark for this video. It is after midnight. I have got work in the morning, so I'm going to have to cut it here. Uh, I will, if you guys would like for me to continue answering these questions, I will continue. Just let me know if you want me to keep going or if you're not interested or whatever. Sorry I'm really sleepy. Uh, I'm sorry it's not as organized and as polished and I'm not presenting all the, the item text and everything like I really prefer to do, but 1,200 comments in 24 hours, it's insane. It's taken 30 minutes to cover three questions and I have a list of about 47 more questions that were not repeats that I thought were really, really good, interesting questions that I would like to talk about. So. The only way I can really do it is if I just sit down and just talk. So yeah, this has kind of been semi-live here, I guess. And the B-roll playthrough, yeah. I don't know, if, if, you, if you guys just want me to continue answering lore questions while showing some B-footage of me playing through the game, let me know, and I will catch you guys very soon. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep, uh, by the way, the other Souls content is kind of on hold if I continue this this series because I'll get all sold out if I keep if I keep doing only Soul stuff. So I, I'm going to continue playing the other games that I'm playing right now, East and Tactics, because I frankly need a break sometimes uh, from Souls so I don't get burnt out. But yeah, if you guys want me to continue doing this kind of lore question and answer slash playthrough thing. Let me know. I'm so tired. Good night, guys. Have a fucking fantastic Friday. Have a fabulous weekend. My summer vacation starts on Monday. I'm so fucking excited. Good night.